How's it going? Thralls Metal here once again. I'm Necrotic Nick, and I'm doing another collection update. Uh, this one still has some stuff I got from Canton, but most of this is just stuff I picked up here too. It's not all mostly stone or in doom metal this time, so we get a little bit more variety. So, let's kick it off. Dead Bird, Twilight Ritual. I got into Dead Bird not too long ago, and it's an awesome blend of stoner, doom, and sludge metal, but there's bits of post metal on this too. Really, really long thought out, built up songs, lots of cool tension and release moments, fiercely bottom heavy fucking guitars, and kind of a good balance between harsher vocals and some cleans. The harsher vocals actually remind me a lot of Scott Kelly's from Neurosis, so that was already a good thing because I already dig the fuck out of those guys. Really solid release. I have their most recent one, and that's definitely more of a turn towards uh, more melodic stuff, but it's still very heavy. This is just heavy as hell pretty much all the way through. Really fucking good release. Uh, this you know, this came out in 2008. Super good release. If you love stoner and doom metal, you'll definitely like this shit. It's fucking awesome. Dissection, Ryan Chaos. The last Dissection album. I didn't get this when it came out, and I happened to find it at a used CD store in Canton for like seven bucks, and I was like, well, this will pretty much complete all their studio albums for me. And it is a letdown when you compare it to their two previous albums, Storm of Lights, Bane, and The Somber Lane. This is very watered down, melodic death metal, uh, like pretty much a neutered version of Hypocrisy. This is the closest thing I can compare it to. There are some good songs on here. I like Starless Aeon, that has some really cool melodies in it and some really memorable riffs, but all in all, this is just kind of flat. Like a lot of the songs just feel pretty much stitched together for people who love In Flames and Soil Work and such, and I love all those bands, but there's really just not a lot of passion behind these songs, unfortunately. And it sucks because this is where they left off their career. Like, the band ended after this, after the frontman's suicide, and yeah, this, this just, I don't know, it leaves kind of a bad taste in your mouth. You know, check it out though, I mean, form your own opinions on this, but this one, maybe I'm, I'm kind of glad I didn't get it when it initially came out, but I'm glad I got it now, it kind of completes the discography, so. That's cool, at least. Yeah, still check it out, though. The Inquisitor, Downfall of the Apostates. Uh, this is a band I just happened to pick up recently in a record store here in Toledo, and it is straightforward old school death metal. Uh, very fast and thrashy for the most part. Kind of reminds me of an interesting mix of a band like Immolation with something like Deicide. Very much in the vein of you know this new run of old school death metal, especially in the terms of the production. Some of the songs don't really seem to go anywhere like the, there's a lot of songs that really blend together unfortunately they like to keep with that same speed they don't really kind of break it down in any like groovier moments or some like death doomier moments the stuff that would make the song stand out uh, the title track definitely is a really good one there's a lot of cool songwriting dynamics and then that, that one's probably the most memorable one on here for me but all in all it's a pretty good album didn't really wow me but I didn't turn it off I really enjoyed listening to it the entire time you know, just, I don't know, I'm becoming kind of picky with my death metal, I guess. Eh, whatever. Still, check it out. It's a good release out on Dark Descent. Cryptos, Afterburner. This was just kind of a weird one I picked up at a buddy of mine's record store. And, I don't know, the, the album cover said, well, this is going to be probably goofy and over the top. And it's kind of right. It's very straightforward like classic heavy metal, sort of this new wave of trad metal that's coming around. Except for the vocals, the vocals seem very much in the vein of like thrash metal or black and thrash because they're really harsh. There's not a lot of singing. I don't think there really is any singing. There's some maybe harmonized growls, I guess, or screams, but not the sort of vocal style you would expect with this style of music, really. Uh, these guys are from Bangalore, India, which, uh, I really don't know of a lot of, you know, heavy metal bands that come from there, so this is kind of new on me. Well, the songs I think are really good, and definitely are, you know, straight up Judas Priest and Iron Maiden worship. The vocals kind of take it in a different direction, and they really don't mesh too well with the overall sound of it. I'd still say check them out, they're an interesting band, and yeah, it's out on uh, AFM Records. Check it out, you know, who knows, you might like it. 1782. Doom or self-titled, it's kind of hard to tell. I think the Doom is not actually the title of this album, which is kind of confusing. Uh, this is a Doom metal band though, they are from Italy. Definitely has a fierce electric wizard feel, except 
it's not particularly that melodic. It's just kind of an okay one. It seems like they kind of spent more time trying to create more of a horror vibe, like, you know, 1970s horror movies from Italy, you know, all that fucking Fulci stuff that I fucking love. But the songs aren't particularly memorable. The vocal melodies really don't catch me. You know, the guitar tone's pretty awesome. Like, it captures a very doomy feel. It's just the songs aren't very memorable, and that's kind of a problem with me. You know, all in all, I'd still say check it out if you love doom metal. This is a pretty interesting release. And if you love Italian horror, yeah, this is still an interesting release. Check it out. Scorched, Echoes of Dismemberment. This is Scorched first full-length album, I believe. It's awesome fucking old-school death metal. Lots of cool, groovy fucking riffs. I fucking love this. You know, it reminds me of, like, you know, death, obituary. Just great old-school 90s stuff. It's out on Ex Unspeakable Acts. Now, I believe they are currently on 20 bucks spin, and it has them listed as on hiatus, which is a shame because I'd like to hear more from these guys. This is a killer album. The production on it is fucking great. Really cool... Uh, deep guttural vocals, but there's also some weird parts in there that have some almost throat singing, which is very strange. It's a really solid fucking listen. There's uh, cool little interludes on here, too, that are definitely sound like splices from, you know, old grindhouse movies and shit, which definitely works with the overall feel for this album because they love their fucking horror. Definitely check this band out if you love fucking killer old school death metal. They're fucking awesome. Haunt. Burst into flame. Finally got my hands on this, and this should pretty much complete all the stuff for Haunt until they release something new. This is, I think, their best album. I, I really dig this one. This is their debut. This was out on Shadow Kingdom Records, and this pretty much captures everything that I loved about the early 80s, late 70s heavy metal you know, sound. It was really fantastic. The vocals aren't particularly like super high on this one. Like Their newer albums, they, they definitely seem to move up a register. This is just great fucking classic sounding stuff. It's really well written, really cool lead melodies and harmonies throughout here. It makes the songs super fucking memorable. It's really fucking good. I can see why there is a hype about this band and this is pretty much where it started. So if you're looking for something that is very retro and very classic, definitely check out Haunt if you already haven't. I think they're pretty well known by now. Check them out. Grave Ritual, Morbid Throne. This is a straight-up old-school death metal band. I believe they are from Louisiana, or they are now from Louisiana. They were from Alabama before. I brought one of their releases in an earlier collection update, and I found this one on Discogs for a reasonable price, so I was like, well, fuck it, let's get the other one. And this is their most recent one. I believe it came out in 2015. And honestly, I don't think it's as good as the first one. The songs didn't stand out as much, and... I thought there would be sort of an uptick in the production a bit, and there really wasn't. But all in all, I think it's still pretty decent. Like I said, if you love old school death metal, like this is still very much in that vein of uh, incantation and stuff of that ilk, maybe a bit of tomb mold and such. Pretty good stuff. Hard to make out their logo or the album title on this album cover, though. It's out on Dark Descent. You know, generally they're pretty solid about signing good death metal acts. Yeah, check this one out. I say check out their other one too. I think it's a little bit better, but this is still pretty good. So yeah, check it out. Vulture, The Guillotine. This is a German thrash metal slash speed metal band. I brought up their newest release on another collection update. I fucking really dug that one. Despite how over the top and high pitched some of those vocal wails go, the music is fucking solid throughout. It's like Slayer meets Flotsam and Jetsam. It's fucking fast, it's furious. Lots of cool fucking riffs, really cool fucking leads throughout here. It's more than just like a nostalgic novelty. It's a fucking killer band. I fucking love how over the top and in love with fucking all things 80s these guys seem to be. Really fucking solid writing on this one. I think the newest one's even better, but this is still a fucking killer album. Check them out. They're a lot of fucking fun. All right, now we got two here from Rip to Shreds. This is Mazeng. Or Mizeng, yeah, something like that. It's actually in Chinese or Japanese. I'm not really sure. And then we have Demon Scriptures, which they have thankfully translated in the back here. This is their first album. This is a one-man band, at least in the studio, from San Jose. I believe the rest of the band is actually in Taiwan. Straight up old school death metal, very much in the vein of Swedish death metal. Lots of thrasher elements in here. 
Really raw production. Almost feels like a demo on this one. Really good stuff, though. Like, you know, pretty well-written songs and hell of a fucking task for one guy to create all this because he's playing every single instrument here. There's no drum machine or anything like that. So, yeah, really fucking good. This one, I think, is even an improvement over the previous one. This one, I think he shows off more songwriting dynamics in here and definitely more versatility in terms of all the genres he seemed to want to cover. It wasn't just old school death metal. Two of the songs in here are straight up old school death metal. Then you have a 44 second grindcore song kind of in the middle of the album, which was kind of fun just to see him kind of throw that like a little bit of repulsion worship almost. And then the last song is over 10 minutes and just kind of goes everywhere, but really well. It really builds on almost like kind of a death doomy beginning, moving into thrashier territory and almost into kind of a melodic death ending. Really well written stuff. I dig the fuck out of these guys and you know, hopefully get a chance to see them live because I'd love to hear this stuff live. Both of these, really good. Definitely check out Ripped to Shreds. They're fucking awesome. The Chasm, Procession to the Infraworld. Finally got a Chasm album that wasn't all an instrumental. I fucking love that album, but it's also refreshing now to hear the vocals on top of these amazing fucking tracks. These guys are incredible writers. Like, there's really a lot of thought that goes into this blend of thrash metal, death metal, maybe even some technical proggy elements in here. Very well thought out songs and song structure, and it's just heavy as hell. The production's decent on this. I have some issues with... Uh, how the drums sound, especially the bass drum, it's it's sometimes a little too booming. There's really not a good clear punch to it. It's kind of a big, loud thud, at least in my car it is. And that's where I'm jamming most of this music. But I fucking love how well-written these songs are. These guys were amazing when we saw them at Maryland Death Fest. You know, one of the bands I definitely became an instant fan of just from seeing it live. Really recommend this one. I need to get some of their earlier stuff though, even though that seems to be really, really pricey on Discog, so just gonna hope I get lucky maybe in a record store and it's nice and modestly priced. But yeah, The Chasm, definitely check them out. 1914, Eschatology of War. I think that's how you pronounce that word, I think I fucked it up. Eh, yeah, whatever. I have their most recent one, Blindly in the Blind, I fucking love it. It is a killer album from start to finish. The awesome World War One theme behind this and it's, it's just incredible. It's really, really well put together, not only in terms of songwriting, but in terms of the theme and how it's paced. Uh, both of these also include a War In and War Out track, much like the other one. Uh, this one definitely has more of the Death Doom feel in a lot of the songs. There's a lot more mid-tempo stuff. The newer stuff definitely has more up-tempo stuff, more blast beats, and just faster, thrashier moments, which I really like. This one just brings a lot of the doom and have to more mid-tempo just kind of a stomp to it. I don't think it's as good as their newest album. I think they're headed in awesome direction there, being even more wide-reaching, but this is a really solid offering. I picked this up on Discogs and I think this is, yeah, this is out on a Ukrainian label, Archaic Sound. The new one was actually out on Napalm, so now they're on a bigger label, get better distribution. But yeah, check out anything by 1914. These guys are fucking incredible. I love this shit. Amen Ra, Mass 5. This is a vinyl rip, so it's kind of a bootleg. Um, I picked it up on Amazon, probably should have looked into it a little bit more as to why I was getting such a nice price, but that's whatever. This is also an incredible album from Amen Ra. I really have yet to hear one that's actually bad. These guys are an amazing post-metal band from Belgium. You know, very comparable to a band like Isis or Neurosis. These guys build songs really well and just build them these giant, epic, huge fucking moments. Nice balance between clean vocals and harsh vocals and very layered, dissonant madness in here. It's just fucking awesome. I, I love this band. Yeah, I would like to find an, you know, a legit version of this, but this will do for now. At least the sound quality is good and I can still jam it. But yeah, good stuff. If you've never heard Amen Rod, definitely check them out. I'll probably be bringing them up more as I find more of their stuff. All right, well, that does it for another collection update. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, sub. We do shit like this all the time. Catch all y'all later. <laughs>